Hey there, welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Eric Johansson, a teacher with LSAT Demon. With me is Nathan Fox, the co-founder of LSATdemon.com and the weekly podcast, Thinking LSAT. Today we have an email from AJ. It says, hey guys, fairly new listener here as I just started the LSAT prep process. I just scored a 140 on my diagnostic and I'm obviously not thrilled. I did have 10 unanswered questions in the first section, but was able to complete nearly every question in the final three sections. No, you weren't. You weren't <laughs> because you didn't get them right. So you didn't actually do them. But we'll, yeah. we'll talk a little bit more about it. I'll finish AJ's email. Yep. AJ says, do you think it's too early to hit the panic button or is it safe to assume I would have had a diagnostic score of around 150 if I got my timing down? Thanks, AJ. So I'm a runner and I was just watching this like parody runner YouTube video of this guy who was creating the like perfect training plan for himself. And he was going through and in some book that has a chart of, well, here is your running ability. And based on your running ability, based on recent times, this is the sort of mileage and workouts that you should be putting in. And you first have to determine, well, how good of a runner am I based on the historical data? And he's there going through the chart and he's, well, well, I ran this, but if the, you know, if I was at sea level <laughs> and if the wind was a little bit better, if the temperature was a little bit cooler. Right. Right, so right. really I should be running 120 miles a week. <laughs> right. And there's this natural tendency to say, well, if I had done this or that, then my score would have been a whole lot better. Don't worry about all of that. It doesn't yeah. matter. Come back and just focus totally. on what were the ones you got wrong? Why did you get them wrong? Yeah. And don't get caught up on the score. 140, perfectly normal diagnostic. And it, yep. you know, is just the starting point. The purpose of that diagnostic was not to get your diagnostic score. It was to introduce you to what the LSAT is. So now you know, okay, this is what it is to sit down and do an LSAT. Now you can move forward one question at a time. Yeah. And it, it's not uh, time to hit the panic button. I don't think we even have a panic button. I mean, the panic button is like months of studying and you're still in the 120s where you're just not showing any understanding of the test. You know, sure. 120s is like really close to just you're not getting any of them right. You're purely randomly guessing. You think you're doing the questions, but you're not doing any of the questions. At 140, you are getting, you know, you're probably getting like, you're, you're still really getting like only half of the questions that you attempted. Correct. And that's really your problem. AJ thinks that timing is the problem. AJ's like, well, it was that first section, that first section. If I just would have finished those 10 questions, then I would have got a 150. No, you wouldn't have. You would have got a 138 because AJ, you went way too fast in section two, three, four. You probably went too fast in section one as well. If I only did the first 10, the first 10 questions of each section, I am sure I would score higher than 140 because would I would get perfect on those 10. I'd be perfect on those first 10. Then I'd yeah. randomly guess on the next 15. I would get three of those guesses on average, three out of 15, one out of five. I would get three guesses, right? So if I did the first 10 questions, I would get 13 points per section on average, which would be higher than AJ's 140. So AJ... Your problem is exactly the opposite. I'm so glad you wrote in because your problem is exactly the opposite of what you have self-diagnosed it as. Your problem is that you're thinking about the time at all. You have to let go of timing. Stop thinking about timing. Your problem is that you're not understanding the words on the page because if you were understanding the words on the page, you wouldn't be missing the questions. <laughs> and you're missing, AJ, if you're finishing the final three sections, but you're only scoring a 140, that means that your accuracy is awful. And when you said, you know, you're like patting yourself on the back. Oh, I'm, I'm proud that, you know, I was able to complete nearly every question. Well, but if you didn't get them right, then you basically didn't complete them. That's not complete. If you didn't find the right answer, yep. you think you did it. It looks like you did it. You tried to do it, but you didn't actually do it because these questions are solvable. They give you a record. They ask you a question about that record. There's one right answer and there's four wrong answers. And if you missed a question, you didn't even do it. I can complete a section really quickly. It doesn't, so can, take, me very, doesn't take me very long to complete a section, but 
nobody's impressed by that. No, I mean, well, look, if you give it to a typical nine year old, they can click a button and, you know, they can look yeah. at uh, B. Uh, how about D? Uh, mm-hmm. How about E? You know, they finish the whole section in four minutes. But they finished it in a similar way to AJ. Fin- now, AJ finished it a little bit better than the than that kid who's just picking random answers, but not a hell of a lot better because you've got so many mistakes, AJ, that like you're making low quality mistakes, too. So now what AJ has to do is go back and review every single one of those attempted questions that he missed. And instead, I would prefer, AJ, that you just do far fewer questions and make far fewer mistakes. Then when you're reviewing questions that you've missed, that question is like, there's probably something there that you're not understanding. There's probably like a, a concept there that you're not getting. And there's an LSAT lesson there that you could learn, which by the way, our explanation in the demon, multiple explanations, videos and written explanations, the, our, our explanations would teach you whatever lesson it is that you need to learn to understand why you missed that question. But at this level of um, attention, which is not enough, AJ's making all sorts of mistakes, including AJ, at least half of those mistakes, and in your case, probably more, at least half of those mistakes came from just you not reading something. You, you either didn't read the record, you know, you didn't read the argument or the passage well enough. You didn't read the question well enough. You didn't read the wrong answer that you picked well enough. You didn't read the right answer that you didn't pick well enough. And that's where all of your mistakes are going from. But it's only because you're focusing on time instead of focusing on accuracy. Yeah. And this is not to dunk on you, AJ. This is where everybody starts. Everybody has to learn this lesson. Us included, right? And and I, and I continually have to learn this lesson every time I sit down to do the LSAT and plug into this mantra of accuracy over speed. So this is just the beginning of your process, AJ. Um, embrace this. But let me let me ask a predictable follow-up question, Nate, which is, all right, accuracy over speed. I get it. I slowed down. I only did the first 10 questions in this time section, and I got them all right. But 10 out of 25 or whatever it is is not going to get me where I need to go. So at a certain point, I do need to get faster. Right. Where does that come from? If not coming up with some sort of timing strategy. Sure. Well, and it's again, the you can't do it via a timing strategy. You have to do it via actual understanding. You're going to get there by really understanding that the questions make sense. When you realize that the questions make sense and that there's one clearly right answer and there are four clearly wrong answers, demonstrably wrong answers and one demonstrably right answer that logically makes sense simply from the words on the page, not from outside knowledge, not from any kind of arcane magic LSAT technique or anything. It's just, no, this is what they said. This is what they asked you about what they said. This correctly answers the question that they asked you about what they said. And these four answers don't. And when you learn that, then you realize, oh my God, I can, I can tell that wrong answers are wrong. Well, okay, first back up step. I can predict the answers while I'm reading the record. I'm I'm reading their arguments and I'm like, okay, I know I see exactly what you did wrong there. I know exactly what you're, you know, I could predict what you're going to ask me. Sure enough, they ask you what you thought you were going to be asked. You already know the answer. Sure enough, that's the answer. So you can predict the answers. That's where you're going to go fast. Step two, you're going to recognize the wrong answers as wrong instead of having to read the entirety of every single wrong answer and really engage with it. It's like putting rain X on your brain. You know, (laughs) those, those wrong answers hit your brain, they hit your eye and you just see you're it's immediately just like now gone. Doesn't even, doesn't phase me at all. Just bounces right off of me. And you bounce out of that answer in five words frequently. You read the beginning of it and you're like, this ain't going to be correct from there. I, I know what correct looks like and I don't see how they're going to get there from there. And you just next, next. Oh, there we go. Perfect. That answer answers the question perfectly. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing objectionable. I didn't even really understand A or B or C. They just looked like garbage. Let me look at E. Oh yeah, that looks like trash too. 
And, you know, some of them you have to read every word and really engage to know that they're wrong, but probably only like half of them. Do you have to read every single word of the wrong answer to know that it's wrong? Then all of a sudden you're going fast while also getting the questions right. But word of warning, if you try to serve two masters at once, this process will be slowed down dramatically. You, you won't be able to do it if you also try to go fast while you do it. You need to really trust us on this. Let go of the clock. You can do a time section and you should, you can do a practice test, but hit the, turn the clock off, hit the clock to turn the clock off. And then the, the purpose, as Eric said, of doing a diagnostic, the purpose of doing time sections, it's not really to see where you're at. It's more to practice this discipline of solving the questions, even in the face of the, you know, the clock is ticking. You're not looking at it because you've turned it off, but you know that you're being timed and still you take the time to really solve each question. That's where huge improvements come from. Absolutely. Email daily at lsatdemon.com if you'd like to ask us a question or share some LSAT or law school admissions news. Thanks for listening. 